This is a Fox News alert. Disgraced film producer Harvey Weinstein could be facing criminal charges in New York for allegedly raping actress Paz de la Huerta. The Manhattan District Attorney reportedly expected to present the Weinstein case to a grand jury as soon as next week. Trace Gallagher is here with details. Hey, Trace. Hi, Tucker. Manhattan DA Cy Vance decided to seek an indictment against Weinstein after New York police interviewed Paz de la Huerta and corroborated a number of details in her story. De la Huerta claims Harvey Weinstein raped her on two occasions. Cy Vance previously came under fire for not pursuing a different case against Weinstein in 2015, saying he lacked evidence. And now Ronan Farrow, who broke one of the initial stories about the allegations against Weinstein, has new reporting on what he calls, quote, the machine that was so so instrumental in keeping this quiet as long as it was quiet. The article goes into great detail about the Operation Weinstein Commission to silence his accusers and suppress stories about the alleged abuse, saying Weinstein hired both an investigations and risk consulting firm in Manhattan and an Israeli intelligence firm to, in effect, bully people out of going public. One of those people is actress Rose McGowan, who accused Weinstein of rape. McGowan claims Weinstein's army of private investigators tried to dig up dirt on the backgrounds and sexual histories of her and several other women. McGowan also claims that an agent for one of the firms hired by Weinstein duped her into several private meetings by posing as a woman's rights advocate. The story also alleges that Weinstein tried to hide his operation by routing contracts with the various firms through his team of lawyers, including that man, legend Legendary attorney David Boies, who represented Al Gore during the litigation of the 2000 presidential election. The article claims that by routing the contracts through attorneys, the investigation could potentially be protected by attorney client privilege. Tucker. Trace Gallagher, a remarkable story. Thanks for that. Aaron Filler is a lawyer representing Paz de la Huerta and joins us tonight. Aaron, thanks for coming on. Good evening. So, uh, tell us what you're alleging on behalf of your client. Well, there are two rapes, um, and these are uh, forcible, uh, non-consented, um, actual rapes. Was there ever a settlement between your client and Harvey Weinstein? Did she at any point sign any doc a document of any kind saying that this didn't happen? No, there's no contact. Basically, after the second rape, 2000, December of 2010, there was no more uh, contact. Um, she uh, heard the, what was going on this month, Jody Cantor's story in the New York Times, right. and uh, she's thought about talking about this before, and this uh, convinced her to go forward. So, um, can you explain the circumstances of the assaults that she alleges? Uh, so she has known Harvey Weinstein, had known Harvey Weinstein for a long time because uh, in Cider House rules at age 14, he was the producer. So and this yes. happened when she was about 25. Um, uh, the first rape occurred when uh, she essentially ran into him at a club. He offered her a ride home because they're neighbors in Tribeca um, and uh, began trying to insist on coming up to her room. Um, they argued a bit in the lobby, and as you've heard on the wire with uh, Gutierrez from 2015, very, saying, look, you're embarrassing me, let's talk in your room. And uh, once he was in the room, this uh, rape occurred. Okay. And, and that, as for the second... Yes. So, um, uh, so during uh, the days and uh, weeks following this, he made contacts trying to get her again to meet him. He would say he's parked in front of uh, her home, he's in the lobby, um, and she was really increasingly terrified like, un and you know, afraid to come home. Um, and uh, finally, on December 23rd, 2010, the second episode, uh, she was at a photo shoot. She got this call again, him saying he's not going to leave till she comes home, and she determined to go confront him. And you've, and I know her well. I've worked on various projects with her over the past five years. Um, she's a very determined person um, who believes reasonably she can go to a person like Weinstein and confront him and tell him um, he's being a stalker, he's a rapist, and he needs to leave. Um, she uh, did go home. She did drink on the way home because she was very anxious. Um, and uh, again, met him in the lobby. 
uh, commenced having this discussion. He again insisted, please, can we go upstairs? Then her plan was to have this argument in the lobby. I mean, I'm sorry, in the hallway of her outside her apartment. Right, I guess. So she was uh, uh, into the apartment. Uh, 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 but where were the police in all of this? And by, by the way, I'm not, I'm not doubting the story, but I'm just confused as to how someone could commit two felony rapes and never wind up in jail. This is seven years ago. So what, why were charges never filed or the police not on this? Well, right from the beginning, um, she was very worried about a career impact. Um, she did discuss the rape but used a code name for him. Um, but she did not choose to report it. She did not choose, she felt that that it would be very difficult to uh, succeed in their uh, their I know, but I mean, but uh, okay, but impacts. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. Look, I feel sorry for her, but lots of other people were abused subsequent to that. So doesn't she kind of regret, in effect, protecting the man who who assaulted her? Um, well, I, I I can't speak for for her on that particular question. Okay. Well, the whole thing is a shame. Thank you very much for explaining that. I appreciate it.